All right, excited to be here and uh, looks like pretty big attendance. So very nice to see so much interest in Web3 this here. This time of the day, that too. <laughs> at, right. at this time of the day, that too. Everybody's yeah. sticking around here. Good to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, great, you know, great, uh, you know, line of speakers here, you know, great panel here. Uh, privileged to be part of this and moderating this. I've been interacting with uh, most of them in this panel. And uh, thanks for joining here. So I'm Ganesh Raju, CEO of Akshaya. Um, so I would like to give a few seconds for each of you to start introducing, and then we can get on to what is creator economy? What is the economy with the metaverse? What does that mean? Right. So everybody is talking about metaverse, but what is the economy around it? Okay, everyone is having their own vision of metaverse. So what does that mean from your perspective and what is the economy behind it? Starting with you, Rahul, yeah, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, gentlemen. Um, um, I'm Rahul and uh, I'm the founder at Metaverse 911. Uh, we are a 911 support to metaverse companies, uh, essentially working on um, creating content, scaling, upskilling, cross-selling people um, to grow the industry and to be able to help uh, Metaverse companies do the job nicely. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Gautam, and I am uh, the chief product officer at uh, Trezi. Uh, Trezi basically is about transforming design. I'm an architect uh, and uh, was a professional architect for about uh, two two and a half decades before I uh, started this particular venture with which we are really trying to create an immersive intervention for the architecture, engineering, and construction industry, which allows uh, architects and building product manufacturers, one of the most ineffective and most wasteful industries, to actually use the power of Metaverse and uh, bring their, the, the fairness of project delivery to their customers. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Rahul Mishra, and I uh, lead Web3 initiative, so Shimaru Entertainment. Uh, we were a Web0 company, now we've moved to Web3. Uh, basically, we've fallen in love with immersive entertainment, and uh, we want to sort of lead the path and uh, you know, bring out the best experiences for consumers uh, to, to see content in a different lens now, and that's what we're working towards. Uh, obviously, you know, we have various other tracks as well, which we built on, uh, but for the session today, we will stick to the metaverse plans we have, yeah. Uh, hey everyone, hi, this is Utsav Mathur. I'm the founder and CEO at Geometry. Uh, we're a no-code platform to build your own metaverses, so anybody over here in the audience can log in, build your own virtual worlds, uh, ranging from some take your meetings, or for larger enterprises, uh, you know, bring in all of your employees, uh, digital twins, so on and so forth. Uh, Uh, hi everyone, my name is Gagan Pal Singh and I am the founder and CEO of Metality Ventures. Uh, I'm an experiential marketing professional turned entrepreneur, got into Web3 and uh, as we say, uh, it's, a, it's an experiential metaverse company where we are merging uh, consumer engagement with building spaces. So we not just build spaces, we move beyond and create experiences and create engagements for our customers. We are building products and enterprise solutions for our clients uh, in two key areas, which is retail and uh, real estate. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And uh, Kano, thanks for joining virtually. If you could introduce yourself as well. Great to be here. Hi, everyone. My name is Kano Singla. I'm the founder and CEO of Metadome.ai. Metadome.ai is an XR and metaverse platform for brands and enterprises. A little bit about me, I've been in the XR space for the last nine years now. And yeah, it's great to be here and happy to share my thoughts on where we are headed and what the future looks like. Awesome. So uh, looks like a great coverage here. So we have some influencers, some now real estate, education, commercial engagement, brands, and all of this. So now we're pretty much covering everything. So now Metaverse into every industries, we are looking at businesses in multiple dimensions here, right? So I would like to ask certain specific questions to each individual of you and to learn about, okay, what, what you are doing, okay, 
and uh, what are you working on currently and how are you commercializing this right because that's something that audience would like to know everyone talks about it but is there a revenue for it right so let's start with gagan Great. I spoke about it a little bit while I was introducing myself. Uh, so there are two key uh, industries that we are focusing on. One is retail. We, have, we are launching India's first shopping street in the metaverse, uh, in one of the European metaverse platform. We believe that we don't need to build our own metaverse. We need to build experiences on the platforms which already exist. Uh, so one of the platform, which is the Nemesis, uh, we are building a shopping street, a European style shopping street where we have a lot of engagements and a ready infrastructure for brands to come in and lease a store uh, at the mall for as low as three months to try it out because as when as I've spoken to people, they've always said that, what do I do if I take the store, right? So now we have made it so easy for them to uh, take a store that, you know, at least three months they can try and see what traction do they get and we plug in the customer engagement part to it and help them get more and more traction out of that. The second area that we are focusing on uh, is building a couple of real estate projects in Noida. Uh, we are bringing the upcoming real estate projects to uh, the metaverse. Uh, right now, a one-to-one, -one, and eventually we'll plug them in into uh, a tech platform where uh, the realtor and the consumer would be able to have better experience of the real estate that they're gonna buy, uh, which usually sells on a sample flat. Now it will sell on a metaverse experience. So I think we are making the job of uh, builders much easy and the experience of customers much more better so that they can have a, have a sense of space. Uh, and yes, uh, uh, we have commercialized it. We have already got in business. Uh, we are building these projects uh, we are six, seven months old metaverse company, but I think with a differentiator of consumer engagement or customer engagement, we have been able to uh, get those clients in and we have started building uh, projects for them. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Gagan. And now I'll jump to Gautam, I'm just switching. So he touched on a little bit of real estate. Can you give your perspective and what do you think, how do you commercialize it? What is the value that you can bring for the real estate in particular? Well, uh, real estate is one of the most tangible use cases of the metaverse, you know, I mean, if, and it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's table stakes, really, from the industry that I come from, where, I mean, I have personally been responsible for creating real estate and in, in a very ineffective manner all these years, you know. Uh, so, yes, absolutely, I think there's a, there's a great proposition there, uh, taking away the physicality of it all and bringing, it, uh, bringing in an immersive, experiential method of selling real estate is... is is the, it's not even the future, it is already in our present. Uh, for us in particular, at Trezi, uh, for us it has been about creating a, a hybrid SaaS sort of an intervention in which we want to kind of, you know, through the afternoon today we have heard a few things around uh, democratization, we have talked, uh, heard about, you know, how things can be given in the hand of a creator rather than you creating a solution yourself. And that's what we are after. Um, our industry, the design industry, the building design industry and building construction, we work with 3D models. We allow people to convert those, uh, those 3D models into a, a semi-metaverse for their own selves and then engage in an immersive manner with their customers and building product manufacturers. So it's really a platform that we have developed. And uh, been on the, at this uh, for, for a while now. And... Uh, I think this year we, uh, and because it's a SaaS-based SaaS -based subscription, uh, people get to use it themselves. They download it, they use it, and they bring in uh, people down the ecosystem into the, uh, onto the platform. And then we charge transactions as the products get sold, the carpets get sold, or the chairs get sold, first get listed, and then get sold. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just from a, from a pure uh, SaaS play perspective, we, we, this year, knock on wood, we should be ending at about a million dollar in revenue, uh, 3x growth next year. Uh, people want this technology. It's just that how are we going to ensure it's still, and we've heard it a few times, right? It's still in its nascent stages of development. We have to ensure we build it the right way and make it easy for people to use and deliver value. Uh, knowing your customers, we again heard, heard that a few times already. So we, we knew where our customers were. We knew what they wanted, having been a part of uh, the industry ourselves for what the leadership group put together in the company has got about 
100 years of domain experience. So uh, we managed to, I think, we managed to create something that people uh, liked to use and will continue using. So that's, that's, been, our, uh, that's been our approach to commercialization. Yep. Thanks, Gautam. So uh, one thing is clear. It's all about immersive experience and engagement. Right, Kano, so could you give your viewpoint from Metadome, okay, what you are doing, how are you looking at economy, what is the commercial part of it, and uh, what is the potential from your viewpoint? Sure, I think a fairly good points uh, covered by fellow panelists on commercialization. And I think just to add to the size of the product, so we were talking about real estate, we were talking about you know interior design, architecture, you know, these are things which are not mobile. You can't move them from one place to the other, right? So you've, you've created a house somewhere, you've created a design somewhere, you can't take it in the physical world from one place to the other. And, you know, this problem sort of persists in other things as well. So, you know, cars is a big example of that. Fashion is a big example of that. And there are certain industries where you would see monetization happening today. So we were talking about real estate. You know, same is the case with industries like automotive and manufacturing. So we, there is an industrial side to metaverse and there is an experiential shopping side to metaverse today. And there are different ways to look at monetization in both these use cases. So the retail side or the shopping side of the metaverse is about experience. It's about what the product is, uh, product experience is all about. You are sitting at your home, you have your mobile phone, you are able to take a 3D or a virtual tour of a product that gives you enough understanding before actually going and step out in the real world. And that value is today retained by brands by increasing their retail conversions. So metaverse today or an experience or a 3D experience today has a direct impact on how your retail conversion funnel looks like. So that is one way in which brands are monetizing these experiences through their channels like website and through their channels like stores because these experiences are not only limited to what happens on the online ecosystem. They also have a ripple effect when we talk about digital or when we talk about offline. Some of the value gets translated into offline sales as well. Because you, you, you can't buy a house online, right? That's not going to happen. Or you will not buy a car online. Most of us won't do that. We will step out and look for a test drive. But bringing some, some aspects of offline into online, that is where Metaverse comes in and some value gets shared. Now looking at the industrial side. So this is something which you know is fairly new for a lot of uh, us as well, that we are looking at high fidelity content. We are looking at multiple people coming into the same environment and collaborating. You know, these are technologies which have existed in the past, but were not accessible. So for us, the way we are looking at monetization is, can we increase productivity or can we increase efficiency in a certain organization's value chain? So. I think Gautam also made this point that, you know, the most inefficient processes that existed in real estate, industries like uh, real estate and architect design, you know, these are industrial use cases. Right? This has uh, this has an example of efficiency coming into the system. This has a business case of profitability coming into the system. So that is another way to look at it. And that is how we are driving value for our customers and our brand partners as well. Thanks, Kano. So you uh, Kano touched on a couple of points where you know you, there is industrial use cases, and then there is a consumer engagement. So when you look at metaverse, certain people look at you know decentralized kind of a you know, avatar, cartoonist kind of a thing, and when you certain people also want to be very realistic, hyper real, right? Digital twin, right? Where there is really a industrial use cases. So um, I like to uh, uh, ask about from the education standpoint and the training standpoint, how can uh, that metaverse can be utilized? Starting with Utsav, uh, could you explain how education is getting transformed? How can you monetize in that space? And again, what type of metaverse are you looking at? Is it cartoonish kind of a metaverse or something very hyper real? Uh, kind of a meta words where you want to be the training. Some lights on that, please. I think uh, you raised some really interesting questions, but before that, I think I'd like to also go towards when we're talking about the creator economy, right? We're talking about two parts to it. One is the economy of it, and then there's the actual creator that comes into it. 
when we talk about the economy, I think primarily the, and it's, I think what I find very easy to converse about at this point is the, uh, the metaverse as a natural extension or an upgradation of the internet itself. And I think that's a really important thing. It's not that we're, you know, suddenly providing value from scratch, which is an important point. And I think some panelists did mention that the ability to not be able to, for example, move, that's created value, right? But it's also upgraded value, which is actually a lot of the most of it, that adding a layer of experience, which is almost essential for us in everything we do today. Adding that layer of, uh, you know, being able to understand, interact with people, places, things, and information better, right? Which has been basically an advent the internet has been on for a very long time. But the metaverse is just the next medium for us to be able to achieve that. So it's really important that, you know, that upgraded value as well as that created value is something we are naturally headed towards. It's not uh, a feature of, you know, having that specific thing. And that value eventually translates into the economy and giving us better models to be able to translate that as well. Uh, but I think that entire economy part is nothing without the creator itself. And I think that's the most important thing. Like how many of us would be able to claim that we are the creators of this value or this that, that is going out and that's an important point uh, to kind of also bring up uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, what we talk about yeah thank you Utsav. so uh, from rahul so there are two roles in the other half so uh, same thing from <laughs> same same thing from the ed uh, education uh, metaverse standpoint what do you think about the creator economy? What does that mean from a creator economy? And uh, who are the creators and what is the value proposition? How are you thinking to bring that? Yeah. So, uh, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge that, you know, I've been 10 months in this uh, business now. I've made three business plans. They keep changing every month. Okay, so there is no real, uh, you know, it's so dynamic, the entire space of, you know, both, you know, the NFT, the metaverse space. So for us to have a plan cast in stone is very difficult. So what we are trying to create is essentially, as Utsav mentioned, it's an extension of the internet. Uh, you know, currently, so Netflix has a 210 million subscriber base globally. When people start experiencing content in the immersive way, A, there has, there has to be content, and B, there has to be experiences. Uh, and obviously now we've also seen the era of TikTok where user-generated content is also uh, taking a lot of mainstream uh, space for brands and advertisers as well. So we're looking at a combination of, uh, you know, experience back with great content. So we, so Shemaru is a, is a Bollywood company. We own 4,000 Bollywood films. How do we create the experiences for users in the metaverse to see it in a different way? How do we create? So we've, we've got one track of NFT already on right now in partnership with Polygon. We've already gone live with that. That's one remedy stream coming to us. The second would be when users actually come to the platform to create content, to view content, to engage with the content. It could, it could go towards subscription. It could go towards advertising, which we will wait and see in the future. So we don't have a right okay. answer right now. Okay. All right. So there's a lot happening in the entertainment industry. So we'll have to wait and watch on that space. Um, we have Yuraj also join. Yuraj, would you, uh, could you introduce yourself? And I think, you know, from your viewpoint, can you talk a little bit about what the creator economy means for you? We couldn't hear you, Yuraj. No, we still couldn't hear you. Okay, so, um, you know, while uh, you, Yuraj, you work on that technical, uh, the difficulty, you can fi fix it, and I'll get with Rahul. As an influencer in this space, you've been working with many companies and doing a lot of advisory and things like that. So, shed some light on the creator economy, and at the same time, Metaverse, what do you, you've been in the space, you've seen this whole thing evolve, especially in India, primarily, but even outside, but in India, what do you think, where are we right now with Metaverse? Okay, and what is, what is with this, this is a great, you know, see the interest, uh, shed some light, okay, where are we going? Touch on the creator economy as well, please. Great, thank you. Thank you. I've been waiting for a while to speak. 
<laughs> How many of you have been to the actual metaverse once? Raise the hands. How many of you have done it five times in the last three months? Okay, what, 10, 15 percent. How many of you here are less than 25 years old? Only three, four. Just on one platform, Roblox has got 120 million. The other platform will have another half a million. Some will have 100,000. Some will have 15,000. Somewhere the total will become 150 million. So the question comes to me, says, oh, Meta is closing down, shutting down. They're firing people all over. The world will shut down one day, the whole Metaverse. What will happen when Metaverse is not there? I say, there must be a nuclear war. Only then you can shut down blockchain. 10% or so brands are the ones who should probably emerge with a great, great Metaverse experience, say in the next any time, 12 months, 24 months, 36 months. It's a notional number. I don't know 35, I don't know 37. Whether is it 10%, is it 9%, but 100%, it will never be a 50%. So 10% brands will take the best value out of, 10 is a notional number, will take the value out of the Metaverse. How? There was, there was all the gaming platforms, we were all creating games forever. We were going and loading our games on uh, this uh, App Store, Roblox, gaming platforms everywhere and making money. But brands are also looking for the same uh, type of customer persona. Because a new brand, somebody who's, a, who's got an apparel brand, wants to go sell it. Why will he go sell it? So Nike went and created a Nike land, made 100 million. Adidas also did the same thing. Didn't even made more than, uh, what, less than 10 million, something like that. So the ones who executed good will make money. The ones who are very big but didn't execute it well is equal to no money. It's unforgiving business. You start the metaverse journey or the NFT journey, and Rahul will agree with me that it's unforgiving. Yes, Rahul? <laughs> now comes part two. 10% will do in the next 12 months, 24, 36. But this 150 million will become 300 million in five years. So the opportunity is 2x. Opportunity is not 1x, it's 2x. So hence, brands will become the content creators. Ganesh? Individuals will come and there will be startups. Some will be from this group will go back and think, can I start a small center on the metaverse? And that's how you will build the content creator's economy. Creator doesn't mean I have to go sell something. Creator doesn't mean I have to go create a Taj Mahal over there. Creator means anybody who has the mind to make money from that 300 million people in the next three years. And that economy is heading all with respect to all the you know, uh, movements and developments happening with all the stalwarts sitting here. The technology implementation rate is only going lesser and lesser every day. What we could do that, and I think what we could do that maybe one year back in six months, we can now do it with the tools like Geometry in what, three days. So this is a journey, I think, you know, for every brand and every individual have to be a part of it. Thank you. Thanks, Rahul. So great uh, viewpoints from everybody. You know, Gagan touched on consumer brands, uh, consumer engagement, education, entertainment. Very excited to see what that leads to, how entertainment industry can get in. Uh, we have, you know, in uh, Gautam touched on uh, real estate, and uh, uh, Kano touched on XR immersive experience. Raul, your viewpoint from. Uh, creator economy and all of that. So I would like to just give few seconds to go around just to give a finishing statement where this whole metaverse is. Just uh, give something for the, the audience what they should be looking for that should be coming up in next few years. Okay, maybe start with you, Rahul. Start with me. <clears throat> the, um, the use cases of the metaverse have to be thought through beforehand. Before you think of getting into the metaverse, please go back into basics of creating a use case. A very simple example, in a, in a minute I will just finish because it will give you a lot of insights in terms of how to think, then what and when to think. A brand, ethnic, ethnic brand, which is premium ethnic brand, has got this 16 million followers. The, the average 
uh, the average between the people, the consumer is 26 years to 45, 47 years old, comes to us and says, hey, we want to go build a store on the metaverse. The answer is, who do you want them to be there? Well, we would like to do one, two, three, four, five. Here is the outcome of our strategic you know, input when it comes to do what they're doing today. First of all, we're not targeting 27-year-old who is the consumer there. Why? Because they're working professionals, women, working women going and, you know, for them to go do something in the metaverse is time consuming. So target the 45-year. Now that's something which is opposite to what I said before. Why would I go target a more than 45-year-old female to come be a part of the metaverse experiences of a ethnic wear? The answer was, we will go and do a Kathak dance or seven forms of dance training in the metaverse, and 45-year-old lady will have a 15-year-old, 17-year-old teen. That teen is your customer. So you got to think about the use case very, very carefully, and once you have the right use case, I think technology after that is just an enabler. That's pretty much. Thanks, Rahul. Gautam? Yeah, I mean, I'll just expand on uh, what was just said. You know, I mean, uh, it's, it's really time to cut the noise and find tangible solutions, because if we don't find tangible solutions, all those fears around meta shutting down and no metaverse real-time use case coming through are going to come true. So create uh, tangible solutions. I think one big opportunity that I see currently creating a, a meaningful, tangible uh, metaverse-oriented solution also involves a uh, high amount of work, right? I mean, there's graphics and there is uh, physics and there is UI, there is AI. All of all these technologies have to come together and got to make it work, right? There lies a huge opportunity if we could take this uh, to becoming a no code or a low code sort of an approach to creating metaverses that everybody sitting in this room can create a metaverse on their own. That would be a real winner. We're far from that, but uh, it would be very exciting to take it at, uh, to that particular point. Yeah. Thanks, Gautam. Uh, Rahul, uh, you're doing something with uh, entertainment as well. So the last closing statement. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> the only point I have is uh, a lot of brands come to the metaverse right now and they expect a Grand Theft Auto experience, you know, which doesn't happen because, you know, you, because of, you don't have a one GB CD with you to run that. So I think for all of us in the room, we have to set expectations right, both with consumers and the stakeholders we're working with. Uh, it's, it's a process, we'll get there, but I think some, of, some, some companies have tried to jump the gun and they probably won't see the future, uh, but, the, but the companies who are vested in this are, are doing it correctly with the right expectation setting, we'll, we'll keep seeing progress. So that's, that's the closing point I had. What's up, please? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, uh, I have some amazing points coming in from the panel as well. And what I'd like to close with is at the center of the creator's economy, again, is the creator, right? We're talking about everyone's ability to, in a way, contribute to the generation of content, which is the largest problem, many of us, many of us would agree, in terms of getting there. And, uh, you know, one of the approaches that we've used that's been successful is everybody out here being able to build towards that entire vision uh, with, with really easy tools, uh, that you could use to build experiences with uh, partnered with who's metaverse partnered with meta to basically grow metaverse literacy right there's one thing about there's of course a skill to it in terms of you know something tools you need to learn but there's also a new canvas right three dimensional data uh, while it's more uh, familiar to uh, architects and I, I mean you know I'm also an architect by training by the way so do relate with that uh, it's also a new canvas for all of us to try and paint because the way we're accessing 3d data is changing tremendously and then when you come to the creator right it's important to note really quickly that the creator I mean when you talk about people this this no code domain but to me is of particular interest because Nobody identifies as a no coder. I have a lot of friends who identify as coders, right? Nobody identifies as a no coder, right? I don't, I don't walk up to people and say I'm a no coder. It's that thing that you need to understand that a horizontal applicability of this for use cases as diverse as architecture to we've worked with, you know, COVID vaccine manufacturing to something as diverse as creating the Bangalore metaverse. I mean, all of those are very diverse and that can only be successful when we've got horizontal level of contributions playing. And that's, I think, uh, one point that I'd like to uh, bring up. Uh, Gagan, you have a point? I think the question to be asked is not why, the question is to be asked what is to be done in the metaverse. I think I always compare it with, we have seen digital era and we have seen it evolving. We have seen when social media came in, everybody used to ask, why do I need to have social media presence, right? 
but eventually the question vanished and it was now how do we use the social media and what do we do on social media and i think the question is same with metaverse as well it's already established that it's needed the brands who come in early will get advantage early early adopter advantage and uh, the question is what they should do and what is the right use case so i think that's from my side yeah thanks uh, kano yeah i think some amazing points and i think just from the standpoint of when we are talking about what to do in the metaverse what we have seen so far happen is a lot of people actually know what to do in the metaverse they just don't have the technology to go live with the metaverse and we've seen a lot of projects from creators and from brands which are just videos today you know they have created some beautiful scenes in game engines in webgl and you know that beautification looks good in a video but they've not been able to take it live they've not been able to uh, you know stream it across devices and you know make it accessible to people because that's another part that a lot of metaverse experiences struggle with today is that even if we figure out what to do even if we figure out how to do it there is an inherent technological challenge that exists today of how do we run such experiences on the web and i think that is a big bottleneck when it comes to accessibility and adoption is concerned and yeah i think that that uh, change is something that we are also working on making sure that a lot of this content that is getting created is actually deployed across devices is actually accessible across devices i think that is a way for us to unlock a lot of potential of the metaverse that currently is staggered currently is very far behind in terms of technological backlogs are concerned so yeah we are hopeful that we will be able to you know bring a lot of this content in front of the world for a lot of our brand partners and creators in the next few months thank you so great view points here from you know wide range of thing from starting from real estate to education to entertainment to brands and from the influencer side right so from me so right now still i have, you know there's lot happening in the metaverse i still think it is still in the nascent stage a lot of companies are doing things with their own way that assuming this is how the metaverse will be right so there will be a time when i think they will all fall into place and there will be some standardizations and we all agree on okay finally this is how the metaverse will look like right so hopefully that happens soon and the whole adoption happens very fast i strongly believe in the potential there is a lot of business use cases industry use cases as well you know these are not uh, not just a disruption that is happening but it is also creating new avenues for new stream of revenues for all these businesses and industries along with the immersive uh, experiences and the engagement that it brings so with that we'll close this and thank you for enjoyed being part of this panel thank you so much mr ganesh for moderating uh, this